Hello everyone, this is Rick, Rick van Bruggen from Neo Technology, and today we're recording another podcast episode that I've been looking forward to for a long time, actually, uh, because I'm a true fan and a, no, not, not a groupie yet, but uh, a fan of Felina Hermans from uh, Delft University. Hi, Felina. Hi, Rick. Hey, great to have you on the podcast. Hi. Yeah, it's fantastic. I, I, we've seen you talk at um, a number of conferences and at the meetup before, uh, but may, most people won't have won't have seen that yet. So maybe you can introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. I'm Felin Hermans. I'm assistant professor at Delft University of Technology, where I run the Spreadsheet Lab. That's a research group of the university that researches spreadsheets, obviously. Obviously, exactly. Well, uh, and that also sort of uh, hints at the relationship with graphs, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. People that have seen my talk or maybe Googled me know that the title of my talk that I usually give is Spreadsheets are Graphs. So we use Neo4j to do graph analysis on spreadsheets. We do all sorts of analysis, actually. The whole, the whole idea of our research is that spreadsheets are actually code. And then if it's code, you need an IDE. So you need to analyze all sorts of constructions within your code. So you can see maybe do you have code smells in your spreadsheet? Maybe do your, does your spreadsheet need refactoring? All the things you typically do on source code for analysis, you should also do on your spreadsheet. And this is where we use Neo4j. If I recall, you actually did some work on proving that uh, spreadsheets are Turing complete, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. To make my point that spreadsheets are code, because many people think it's funny. If I say, hey, I do research on spreadsheets and I wrote a PhD dissertation on spreadsheets, people laugh in my face often. <laughs> really? Can you do a dissertation on that if you're in software engineering? And I say, yeah, but they're actually source code. People don't believe me. Mm -hmm. so to prove my point, indeed, I implemented a Turing machine in a spreadsheet using only formulas to show that they are Turing complete, and that makes them as powerful as any other programming language. So that should stop people from laughing at me. <laughs> exactly. Well, I think it's it's funny, but it's also really, really interesting. I think fundamentally, it's a it's a very interesting approach, and that's why I think you know people also love your talks. It's a, it's a it's a very interesting topic. So, why did you get into graphs then, uh, Felina? You know, how, can tell us more about that. You know, how did you get into that um, relationship with between spreadsheets and graphs? So, as I said, we do smell detection as well, and for that, we initially stored information in a database. And we stored information, for instance, what cell relates to what other cell, because if you want to calculate a smell like feature envy, in source code feature envy would be a method that uses a lot of fields from a different class. So you can see in a similar way that in a spreadsheet, a formula that uses a lot of cells from a different worksheet has the feature envy smell. It should actually go in the other worksheet. So in order to save that type of information, you need to store what cell relates to what other cell. And initially, you know, I never thought about what database do I use. In my mind, a few years ago, database was just a synonym for SQL Server. I was in a Microsoft world where we make plugins for Excel, so databases is just SQL. It's the same thing. I didn't think about it. I just dropped all my stuff in the database, aka yeah. SQL. And initially that worked fine, so some analyses you can re really easily do, but at one point you want to really deeply understand how all the cells relate to each other because you want to measure the health of the spreadsheet. So we got horrible queries, SQL queries of like, one A4 sheet of paper, very, very complicated. But still, I thought, you know, databases are just hard. I didn't really think about it until I saw a talk from one of your colleagues, Amanda, at Build Stuff in Vilnius. Uh, yeah, yeah. I saw her talk, and then there was really like a light bulb above my head. Bing! <laughs> this is what I need! And then a few weeks later, I was on site at a customer for weeks, so I wasn't bothered by students or colleagues, so I could really program for a while. And I thought, okay, this is my chance. Let's try and get my data into Neo4j and see how it will improve, how, what type of analyses that it would make easier. So that, that's what I did and what I tried. And lots of the analyses, how many hops are there between these two cells or what is the biggest span within the graph? 
obviously are very easy to answer in Neo4j. So that's why we changed some of our analysis queries to run on the Neo4j database because it was so much easier to do to explore the data in a graph way because yeah, spreadsheets are graphs. There's a whole graph layer underneath the the grid like interface that was really easy to analyze with me. That is such a great story and such a great summary of uh, well, why it's such a great fit. And I, I guess most people don't think of it that way, but effectively what you're doing is like dependency analysis, right? Yeah, that's yeah. what we're doing. How yeah. do cells depend on each other? Yeah, exactly. Right. Super interesting. Yeah. And is that is something that you, you currently already you know use? I, mean, I know you've been developers developing software on top of Neo4j, right? Is that already that people something that people can, can look at? Uh, no, so currently we, we we only look at it with, within our own research group. So the okay. type of analysis we do is for us as researchers. It's not user facing. So we have a smell detection tool that is somewhat user facing, where spread, spreadsheet users can upload their spreadsheet and they get some analysis in the browser. But that is not as advanced as the analysis we use. And that is so that is they're still using the SQL backend because. Users typically don't really want to explore their spreadsheet in a way that we want to explore spreadsheets if we're researching. A spreadsheet user is not going to ask himself the question, hey, how far, how wide are my cells connected? Oh, yeah. that's, that's really more uh, research, a research tool. I understand, totally. Okay, so, so what are your plans around that, Felina? Are you, are you still expanding that work or is that something that is still under development then? Or you know, where is this going, you think? Yeah, so obviously if you say smells, then you say refactoring. So we've done lots of work on the smells. Even though we, we keep adding new smells, we feel that we have covered the smells area pretty nicely. And then the next step, of course, would be refactoring the smells. If I know that this cell suffers from feature envy, it is jealous of that nice worksheet where all the cells are that he is using that formula. You want to move the formula to the other worksheet so that it's nicely close together to the cells that he's using. So these type of refactorings, moving cells in order to improve the graph structure is something that we're looking at. So one of my PhD students is currently looking at comparing the, the underlying graph. So where are the cells connected to each other? Compare that look on the spreadsheet to where are the cells in the worksheet. So if you have a big cluster of cells, they're all referring to each other, mm -hmm. but they are physically located on two different worksheets, that's probably not ideal for the user because then you, ha you have to switch back and forth. And the other, the other way around is, is true as well. If you have a worksheet where there are two clusters of cells relating to each other, maybe it would be better to give each of these clusters their own worksheets. So these are the type of refactorings that we are looking into. If you have a big disparity between how your spreadsheet is layouted and how your graph connections are, then this is very smelly and you should do something to improve the structure. So there's still a lot of graphs also in the, in the refactoring future that we see. That Again, sounds so interesting. Uh, I think we could uh, we could uh, have a lot of uh, joy, spreadsheet joy, uh, because of that. I would love to love to see that. Very cool. Uh, any any other topics that you think would be relevant for our podcast listeners, Felina, or uh, you, you, are you anything else that comes to mind? Yeah, so one other thing, one final thing that I <laughs> I, I like to pitch my research a little bit. Of course, I yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things that we're also looking at is looking at uh, what in a spreadsheet are labels and what in a spreadsheet is data and especially how do they relate to each other. Uh -huh. If you want to, for instance, generate documentation from a spreadsheet or help a user understand a spreadsheet, it's very important to know if you have you take a random formula from a spreadsheet, what is it calculating? Is this the turnover of January or is this the sales of blue shoes and sometimes it's easy because again the layout matches the formulas so sometimes you can just walk up the column or down the row to get the label but sometimes the layout is a little bit more complicated and one of the things that we are working in on is trying to make an algorithm semi-automatic and maybe with some user assistance or entirely automated where you can pick a random cell and then it will give you what what it is, what it's semantically happening in that cell. And for that, 
Can I add links to your story as well? Yes, yes you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll share a link of we, we did an online game where yeah. we gave people a random spreadsheet and a random cell, and they had to click the labels. Yeah. And we used that in a, an online course that I told them we got 150,000 data points out of that game. Wow. And we're currently analyzing that data to see what patterns are there in labeling. What usually is described by users as the labels of cells and we hope that from that we can get generate or synthesize an algorithm that can do that for us super cool well you know uh, let's let's put to put together a couple of links uh, to your talks but also to your uh, your research uh, on the blog post that goes with this podcast and then uh, i'm sure people will love reading about it and will also love to uh, hear about your future uh, work Thanks. i think that would be great to keep in touch yeah Super. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Felina. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, seeing one of your talks, blog posts, whatever in the near future. No problem. All right. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye.